Okay now, so what should I do? So I was implementing this simple book detail page as part of the Angular search bar tutorial. And I just needed a component or a page where I could give in the book ID and I could fetch the book detail from the Google Books API by making an API call and just show it on the UI. Now it does sound simple, right? But is it? As it turns out, it's not really that simple or clean to implement when using the Signals API. So let me explain a bit by using this code example. So you can see this is the component that I was trying to implement. And you can see that we have a book ID input here. And we have the result service which we are using to get that book detail. It can, it's the API call in and returns a promise. And then we have a detail signal which is going to contain our detail which we are going to get back from the API. So you would say that the easiest way to do that would be to use the ng on init hook. So the ng on init hook is run whenever the component loads. So let's add an ng on init here. We can simply, in fact, we can simply make it into an async and we can do a response await this dot result service get book detail and then we can here use the book id the value of the book id the value that we get at the ng on init when it's run and then below that we can just set that response that we get to the detail sounds really simple and easy to implement let's test this out so you can see that yes the book loads the book detail page loads really nicely and if for example we go in angular testing and we go in the results page and we try to click on this it appears to be fine. But this is just one case in which this is working. Our app is not fully reactive and I'll show you how. So for example, you can see that the um, component has loaded at this point. So the ng on init hook has run. Now we also have this provision where we can go directly to a detail page through the search bar here. Now for example, if we click on Angular 2 test driven development now, you can see the ID changes here. So the signal here is updating, but the detail page is not changing. And that is because we are only calling this code on the ng on it. So in other words, our code is not fully reactive. And that means that we're not using the power of signals. Okay, so what can we do to resolve this? So what is a primitive that is provided by Angular which does something when a signal changes? We could perhaps use that. We could perhaps use the effects primitive. So let's try to do that. Let's remove this here. And let's create an effect here called fetch detail. Let's call this effect. And then we are going to do the same thing that we were doing there. So let's use await dot result service dot detail and this book ID. And then we are going to set the detail with our response that we get from the API. But wait, the issue is that it's saying that it needs to have an async. So let's add an async to this function. Okay, let's try this out. Now, when we try this out, we can see the initial uh, load works, which is the initial value of the book ID. And when we try to change this, for example, we go directly to some other book detail. You can see that it changes nicely as well. So this actually works, but there are two problems with this approach. So the first issue of this approach is that we are actually changing a signal within an effect. And to see what the issue could be in this case, let me just show you what will happen if you, for example, set a value of detail here. So let's say we want to clear up the value initially and we use a use a set method to change the signal within an effect. And now when we save this, we can test it out again and we can see that nothing works. And the reason, because in the console, you will see that you get an error writing to signals is not allowed in a computer or an effect by default. So this is actually advised against by the Angular team because of the reason that changing a signal within an effect can actually trigger the effect again if you actually are listening to that same signal. So it, it could go in a sort of an infinite loop, which you want to avoid. So basically the effects primitive, the Angular team advises is not to be used for changing signals or any sort of core business logic. It should only be used for logging or other small stuff. For example, changing things on the UI based on some signal value, not for core business logic as we are doing here. So then I would not want to use an effect for this purpose. Okay, so what other options do we have? Now, another option is, which is more suitable and which is more recommended, is to actually use RxJS for this. Now, why would we use RxJS for this? Because a signal is meant for synchronous reactivity and it's not really meant for asynchronous reactivity like network calls or, you know, timeouts. For those purposes, RxJS is still a preferred method or we can use promises. So, we like to use RxJS here uh, because Angular provides first class support for it. So how do we do that exactly? So let's remove fetch detail again here 
and what we can do here is we can convert the signal to an observable and then we can use that to actually call the API. So let's convert the book ID signal into an observable and let's use the to observable method. This is a utility a set of utilities provided by Angular in Angular Core so that we can convert between signals and RxJS observables easily. So we have two observable and we can do this dot book ID. And then once we have it in the form of an observable, we can pipe into it just like we do with a normal RxJS observable. And we can use switch map or any of the other operators. Here I'm going to use switch map book ID. And since it is a promise, we were returning a promise from the result service, we can actually just use it directly because we can actually do so. So this dot result service dot get book detail and book ID. And now we have that book ID with us. So we can just subscribe to it. We can do detail. And in the subscription block, we can do this dot detail dot set the detail we get from here. So let's try this out. Great. So the initial load works. That's fine. But is it really reactive? Let's see that. When Angular testing, we click on this and yes, it is reactive just as we want it to be. But what's, what's something which is not really ideal about this code? And I'll tell you that is the subscribe block here. Now, when we use the subscribe block, we will also need to add an unsubscription logic here. There are various ways to do it, but it, it is sort of a best practice that we don't have to do it ourselves. So it's best that we avoid subscriptions. Now, how do we avoid the subscription? So what we can do is that we can just convert this whole observable chain directly back to a signal as well. And how do we do that now? So we can just use this to observable and just get it till this pipe. Okay. And then we can assign it to the detail signal here. We can remove this. We don't need this. Now this is a two observable, but since this is, we want this to be a signal, we can actually convert back this observable to a signal. We can do to signal and we can just encapsulate this whole into the signal again. Now to signal basically is going to automatically subscribe and unsubscribe. So we don't have to handle that logic ourselves. And now we can have this new signal from a signal book ID directly. And let's see if this works. Okay. If this works as before, so you can see the initial thing works and let's test out the other thing as well. Yes. So it is reactive just as you want it to be. So now you can use this way of converting from observable to signal. And there's actually no real reason to not use this. This can be the recommended method, but I think that it is a bit too much boilerplate for such a simple functionality. And now we can see the problem I was talking about initially. So, so the problem is that the signals API is meant to be used for synchronous reactivity. Now, before this angular developers like us used to just reach out for RxJS observables whenever you wanted to have any sort of reactivity in our Angular applications. So we used to use RxJS observables for the state. We used to use RxJS observables for network calls. We used to use RxJS, RxJS observables for basically everything. And it was really nice that we had one thing to do. But now with the signals API, we really have to be mindful about when to use signals. So signals should be used for synchronous reactivity. That is for your state management and for doing UI related reactivity but they cannot be used for asynchronous reactivity such as API or network calls. For that purpose, RxJS and promises are the preferred methods. Because we need to distinguish between these two types of reactivity when we build our applications now, we need to convert between them using interop. And it turns out when you interop between them, it's not as clean as you would want it to be, at least using the primitives that Angular provides at this point. So of course, this, uh, this apparent gap has led to some amazing contributions by uh, the Angular community. And I'm going to share one of that contribution, which is going to make this really simple and clean to implement. And that is a part of a larger extensions library, which was released by Nia and Chow Tran. They both are really amazing contributors in the Angular community. Thumbs up to them. So they came up with this idea of derived async. Well, it was computed async before, but now it's derived async. So let me show you that. And you can see here that we have the documentation for derived async. So basically this allows us to send in either a promise or even an observable, and it gives you back a signal right out of the box so that you don't have to write a lot of two observables and two signals code. So let's try and using this, I've already installed the ng extensions, the latest version and just have to use it now. So in, in our code, for example, this two signal and two observable, we can now actually remove all of this and we can just use 
derived async. So this sort of looks like just a function, just like a computed would. So it fits in with the signals API and the, the function based syntax that it has. So we just going to return our result service dot get book detail and we can just pass in the book ID value here and that's it. And let's test this out and you can see the initial thing works nice. Let's test out whether it is truly reactive. We open the same thing and you can see that it works really nicely. Great. So this basically is a behaves like a computed, but is an asynchronous computed. So it sort of fits in well with the mental model of, you know, distinguishing between synchronous and asynchronous, which as Angular developers, we should be mindful of at this point. So I hope you like this sort of small problem that I came across in the signals API, not in the signals API, but in the way we use signals as Angular developers, how we should use signals. So I just wanted to share it with you guys so that you could get more clarity about how to use signals and how to actually interop between observables and signals, which you will have to do in any real application. So I hope you liked this. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel so that I can keep bringing you more content like this. You can also comment so that my video can reach more people. Thanks for watching and I will be going to see you next time.